Hi again. I've never received as many messages of every kind as I have in the past, say, month, and uh, thanks for sending them. Obviously, something's going on out there. I'm not sure exactly what. People are preparing for something. But anyway, amazing questions. I'm, as, I'm sorry I don't have all the answers, especially about ultra-modern stuff like infrared and, and night vision equipment. And so I, I went digging in the vault, and I thought, well, I can talk about something that I do know about, uh, which was very affordable when I bought this particular night vision scope. And I had, I somehow ended up with five or six of them. This is the last one. So I thought, I, I don't have something to, to show you that costs thousands and thousands of dollars, and it may not be the most perfect technologically, but it's, it's excellent uh, for what it is. So it's made by, actually, it's marketed by Tasco. Um, mine all came in this uh, Pelican style box. I'll just spin it around. And like I said, this is the last one I have. And um, I still have the, the brochure and all the things that it came with. You'll ask me what time frame this is, and I'm not sure. Maybe in the 90s or, you know, 2005, somewhere in there. But if you're looking for something that's serviceable, um, night vision this is probably not a bad way to go this it does have an infrared illuminator I checked on the weekend um, how much these things cost and we're talking in the hundreds of dollars or less and maybe people aren't aware how excellent these are I think this would be called a first generation or, or maybe a no generation scope but you fire this thing up and you can see a lot. There's an excellent reticle. Uh, I've used the, not this particular scope, but the prior ones that I had. The reason this lens cover has that small hole is, as you probably know, um, this, the, I, I probably have the, in, ten, the words wrong, but it's like an image intensifier or something like that. So a, a small amount of light, of ambient light, is multiplied many times. So that's what you look through when there's any kind of light. And then when it's dark, you flip off this cap. And um, I won't go into how these buttons work, mainly because I don't remember. But you turn them on and um, you can increase the intensity or decrease the intensity. The batteries last forever as far as I remember. It takes a couple of, of specialized batteries, but they're very easy to find. And just they're not double A's or something like that. And um, so how far can you see? About 200 yards, I would say. You can see further, uh, but the illumination maybe isn't the best. With the infrared illuminator on, uh, it, it's a lot further than that. And it's quite striking. You can sit in a f effectively more or less what seems like perfect darkness with this scope. And no one knows you're there. And for the few hundred dollars they cost, I, I've seen them on eBay and Amazon. These are Eastern Bloc scopes. Like this is, a, I think it's a Soviet product uh, or design. Uh, some of them were made in Belarus. Some of them were made in Ukraine. Different places, I think, that have factories. And I mean, I don't know. People s told me it's an ugly scope. I'm not sure exactly what a night vision scope is supposed to look like. Uh, but I mean, none of them are going to win any fashion shows. But this is an excellent scope, so I thought I'd show it to you. Uh, mainly because uh, a fellow bought it for me, so I thought, well, I can't show it to you if it's gone. So this is excellent, and the models are NVS 460, like it says here on this paper, 460 and and 470, and this one that I just showed you is the 460, and there's some, you know, distinctions between the two, but I can't imagine actually needing more than this few hundred dollar scope. Um, I'm, I'm sure that maybe weapons, you know, uh, reach further into the dark than they did. But at practical ranges, this is an excellent scope. So I thought I'd show that to you. And then, just because so much is going on with all kinds of firearms-related stuff, um, I thought I'd show you, um, well, a scope you don't see every day. This, people wrote me, isn't there something other than a round tube? So <laughs> this is a size came out. I don't know when, 150th anniversary scope. That's kind of a neat scope. It's a Diavari ZM, 
and what is it, two and a half to ten by forty-eight. The, the fantastic, um, bright, optically bright. Uh, the lenses are perfect, and I tried to keep it in in good shape. And then, you may remember a long time ago, I made a video of my old scopes, which I kept getting off of these used rifles I buy. Some people asked me, well, which was the brightest or the best of them? And I would have to give that prize to this, to this series, not just this exact scope. They're Kalas um, Super Helia, H-E-L-I-A, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. And I'll set it on the table. Um, those are tally mounts, actually, I'll turn it around. And yeah, Kalas Helia Super. And I don't know what coating they put on the lenses, but you can take that scope and even with uh, Zeiss and a Schmidt and Bender and, and all the rest of those, um, you know, I, I used to sit at dusk and at dawn trying to compare for people that were asking or buying scopes and for my own interest. And invariably, this is the brightest scope. Even now, I can't find a scope that just brightens everything up the way these do and then as far as um, all the younger viewers who are asking about scopes that they should buy that they don't know about well you probably do know about them but these Lyman four powers especially if you can get what with a post reticle these are excellent scopes and as you can see um, I try to buy them whenever I can I'm not, I think they do come from the factory with that highlighted um, white on them. Some of them have the post, some have a crosshair. Whenever I see them in decent shape, I just buy them. And it, on some of these, it says Perma Center. That just means that the, the, uh, the reticle is always centered um, in the field of view. I think this one, the field of view, changed or appears to change because the reticle moves to. Uh, coincide with point of impact but if you just want to pick up an inexpensive scope that is not a piece of junk that's actually a superb scope and put it on a new rifle or, or an old rifle um, these are optically excellent uh, completely reliable and in four power they most of the time four power does just about everything that you need a, a scope to do unless you're into you know specialized long-range shooting uh, which for in my case isn't really possible most of the time. So I thought I'd share these things with you, uh, especially since whatever's going on, everybody's preparing for uh, the question about night vision and infrared. I wish I had an infrared something, but I don't, and don't know much about them. I looked at some of the prices and they're way out there. So I thought, well, this is actually something uh, maybe people aren't aware of how excellent this, this is. And that Soviet technology, I think, was was quite reliable, and we all know what the cost of labor was there, way back when. So pre eighty nine. So it's it's not new technology, but I still think it's reliable and excellent, kind of like an AK, uh, not the newest design. Uh, sort of a mixed bag of things to share with you. I, like I said, I end up with a lot of scopes, but these ones I thought I'd bring to your attention. The Lyman 4 Power, the Kalas Helia. Uh, this one's just a beautiful kind of heirloom scope. And then for practical use, if you can get one of these and pop it on uh, anything, they show you how to put it on your AR or any bolt action, you'll be surprised how effective these are. Anyway, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, and if you can help the channel in any way, I'd appreciate that on Patreon or some other way, it'd be great. And in the meantime, I'll keep going, stay healthy and safe, and see you next time. Take care.